we are still discussing other evidences uh, supporting organic evolution. The third evidence is called cell biology. All eukaryotic cells have organelles such as mitochondria, membrane bound nuclei, ribosomes, Golgi bodies, among others, indicating that different organisms have a common ancestor. Eukaryotic cells are cells that um, are bound by a membrane, they are covered by a membrane, and organelles are those parts within a cell that carry out various functions. For example, this is a typical eukaryotic cell. We have a nuclear membrane enclosing the nucleus. Um, ribosome is normally enclosed by a membrane. All these um, organelles are bound by a membrane. And all eukaryotic cells have most of these organelles. They also contain common biological pigment like the DNA and adenosine, adenosine triphosphate, also uh, abbreviated as ATP. There are three phosphate groups, that is why it is called triphosphate, and it is a form of energy stored in the cell. These structures indicate a common ancestry. So these pigments or these chemical substances are present in all eukaryotic cells together with these organelles, indicating that they have a common ancestry. Apart from the similarities displayed in both plants and animals, there are some differences. For example, plant cells contain cellulose cell wall, chloroplast, and chlorophyll pigment, which are absent in animal cells. Chloroplast is that organelle uh, which carries out photosynthesis or, or making food for the plant. Chlorophyll is a pigment where the process of photosynthesis takes place. It traps light energy. On the other hand, cellulose is a material which is found in cell walls and it prevents cells from bursting. So that is why animal or plant cells do not burst when immersed in a, a water solution or distilled solution. This is an animal cell and a plant cell. You can see a plant cell has a cell wall which is absent in a animal cell. Animal cell only has a cell membrane which is present also in a plant cell. And then all these other organelles are common to both plants, uh, both plant and animal cell. However, you can see the central is also present in an animal cell but absent in a plant cell. Central is an organelle which is involved in cell division um, as well as formation of cilia and flagella. Among animals, the blood pigments are universal of universal occurrence. For example, hemoglobin, um, hemocenin and chlorochronin. Hemoglobin is distributed in vertebrates. And vertebrates are those animals that have a dorsal, not a core or a backbone. In vertebrates, on the other hand, do not have a, a backbone. So these pigments are common in animals. This shows that from common ancestral stroke, plants and animals evolved along different uh, lines because they have these organelles which are similar, but they are also have um, uh, organelles which are not common in both plant and animal cells. The other evidence is called comparative embryology. Comparative embryology is the study of morphological or uh, structural similarities and differences between embryonic stages of different vertebrates. Different vertebrates have a number of similarities. The most sig significant similarity is seen in the embryonic stages or during the early stages of development of an embryo. Very similar embryos indicate a recent common ancestor. That is, for instance, the embryos of all vertebrates have similar structures like 
the gill slits, a tail and a two chambered heart. A two chambered heart indicates that circulation is single. Blood flows only once to the heart in every complete circulation. But those organisms that have double circulation, blood flows twice to the heart in every complete circulation. This is it. You can see fish, reptile, bird, and humans. They have a tail and a gill slit. Meaning they have a common ancestor. So look at these embryos at different stages. These are the early stages of development. And then after some time, and then development proceeds until they uh, become fully developed. The other evidence is called comparative serology. And serology is the study of serum. And serum is blood plasma without fibrinogen uh, and fibrinogen is that factor that makes blood to clot or prevent bleeding whenever there is a wound. Analysis of blood proteins and antigens reveal phy phylogenic relations, relationship. Species that are closely related contain more similar blood proteins. If human serum is injected into a rabbit, the proteins in the serum act as antigens. So antigen is something the body recognizes as foreign. It is enemy to the body. The body will respond by producing antibodies. So the rabbit produces antibodies against the human proteins. The, body, the immune system of the rabbit will produce defense mechanism or proteins called antibodies against these proteins called the antigens. When blood with antibodies is drawn now from the rabbit and mixed with serum from different animals, an immunological reaction occurs, forming a precipitate or a suspension. That is it. So the antibody from the rabbit are mixed with serum of different animals this one is human is mixed with human serum you can see there is a lot of precipitate and then that of chimpanzee the precipitate has reduced and then that one with a monkey and then finally with a dog there is no precipitate at all so the greater the amount of precipitate formed the greater the phylogenic relationship between the animal and the human being the reaction between these antibodies and serum, apes like chimpanzee, produces a lot of precipitate, showing a closer relationship. So where we have precipitate shows this closer relationship, but here there is no precipitate, meaning uh, the, 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 the relation is distant. There is no relationship between dog and human beings. That marks the end of that lesson. Finish this work to help you understand better. <laughs>